Today on How to Drink, I am making perca colas from Call of Duty. What the hell are perca colas? Uh, they're these power-ups that you can acquire in the Call of Duty Zombies mode. Look, I'm probably gonna get a lot of this somewhat sideways because I'm personally going a lot from the Call of Duty wiki. But I do think that they were mostly invented by something called Group 935 with the help of some guy called Dr. Monty, who is obviously played by Malcolm McDowell. They say time is the fire in which we burn. Three years ago, I did an episode where I made four Perca-Colas and I said, hey guys, if this episode gets to like 3 million views or something, I'm gonna do a sequel. And right now it's at 2.2 million views and I think that's probably good enough. But here is the new deal. If this episode does halfway decent numbers, I'm gonna keep this going as a series. Uh, we'll get through actually all of the perca colas, but this time it'll only take me like a couple of months to get to the next one. Maybe we'll do them like quarterly or something like that until all the perca colas are done. One thing that's really important to me in the perca colas is the presentation, right? They gotta look like the perca colas. And for me, that means getting them bottled. Eh? that can sit on a shelf and be opened down the road. What that means is that there can't be anything perishable in the bottles. So no fresh fruit juices, which creates a problem when you're working with cocktails, to be honest. The real question in doing this episode was, how chemistry set did I want to get? Because I really could have done this in a very laboratory-esque kind of way. I'm kind of going few steps in that direction, but not all the way because I did want these to be as accessible as possible. One thing you're gonna need are labels. I designed them and printed them. I'm gonna make a link available to everything you need to make these. Uh, the paper that I printed them on, the actual file that I printed the labels, the bottles that I bought, the bottle caps, the capper, all of that. So I mentioned that you can't really use fresh fruit juices like lime juice or lemon juice or else these will probably go bad. And even if they don't go bad, they're gonna have like little bits of particulate in it and it won't really look good. So what am I gonna do? This is an aqueous solution of citric and malic acids, otherwise known as bitter water or tart water, which one, matches the pH of lime juice and two, matches roughly the distribution of citric and malic acid in lime juice. So this is essentially lime juice without the lime flavoring, for our purposes, this is perfect. I probably need more of it, so why don't we make it now on the show? So, I have 750 milliliters of water here. I need 60 grams of citric acid. And all of these ingredients uh, I'll provide links to so you can get your own. This isn't rocket science. If you're off a little bit, it will be fine. Now I need 3% malic acid. Maybe I'm gonna bump that up to 4%, actually. So 750 times 0 0.04, and of course that's 30 grams. <laughs> uh, duh. And you can play with those numbers. You may find different numbers from different sources to use, but that's roughly about right. And roughly is fine, because every lime is gonna have a slightly different amount of acid in it, different species of limes, different growing seasons. All of that stuff is gonna matter. So, you know, close is fine. There's no really 100% perfectly correct answer for this one. All I gotta do is add this to my uh, water. Perfect. Now just shake it up and it will dissolve. It will, might take a little bit of oof. I think I got it. Yep, that's the ticket. It's time for lunch, which is why I am glad this episode is sponsored by Just Meats. Let's see, what are we doing here? We're gonna do herb roasted chicken breast and I can just build a whole meal around that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this with some rice and beans and uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty okay lunch. So here we go. So one of the things I love about Just Meats is how easy and low prep this kind of thing can really be. By having something like this already seasoned, already cooked and ready to heat up, in my fridge is gonna prevent me ordering takeout or going to a restaurant, and that saves me a lot of money. And frankly, takeout and restaurant food is usually not the healthiest food either. I am ready for my lunch. Let's see how this came out. It's excellent. I could easily devour this in like 30 seconds. I don't eat red meat. One of the things I love about Just Meats is that it makes it easy for me to get chicken or turkey. They can adhere to whatever your dietary requirements are. There's no artificial colors, no artificial flavors. Beef is grass-fed and grass-finished. 
they offer a money back guarantee. And even though I spent a little time throwing this together, you really could heat this up in about two minutes. Just Meats has a lot of different flavors and seasonings and subscription levels available. Uh, so if you wanna simplify your meal prep, if you want to get these wonderful meals in the mail, use the link in the pink cup below or up here in the corner. You can use code How to Drink. You're going to get $15 off your first order, which will stack with any other deals that are currently running on the website. Uh, and thank you again to Just Meats for one lunch and also two sponsoring. And now back to the show. All right, let's make a dead shot daiquiri. Uh, this is a Perca Cola that makes headshots easier. And according to the characters in the game, this perk has a very sweet taste, with Samantha claiming that it tastes like strawberries. I don't know who Samantha is, but she says it tastes like strawberries. I'm gonna make three bottles. So I'll be giving the recipe, but then also tripling the recipe. Whoops, I dropped that. Each one of these Perca Colas has two ounces of rum in it. I'm going to need six ounces for my recipe. Each one of these gets one ounce of the acid water. So I need three ounces of acid water. Each of these need a half an ounce of strawberry pucker. So one and a half ounces for my purposes. And they each need an ounce and a half of simple syrup. Why an ounce and a half? Isn't that really sweet for a daiquiri? Yeah, it is. I want this to be accessible. I want this to present kind of like a bottled soft drink, like a cola, so to speak. Let's see here. Ounce and a half times three would be four and a half ounces. And my shaker cup is very full. So I'm going to stir this in the cup and then split it into another shaker. There we go, two equal pours. We need some ice for these. I'm just gonna crack all of my ice. Let's get these guys together. Shake them up. Now I need to carbonate it. God, it's so pink. It reminds me of uh, Ghostbusters 2. I have seen some disgusting crud in my time, but you take the cake. You are, hey, you're just. Just to backtrack for a half a second, the other reason I added a little extra sweetness to this, and maybe I still will, is because once you start carbonating drinks, the perceived sweetness drops a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna add an extra two ounces of sweetness to this. Yeah, that's where I want it. Use my trusty drink mate carbonator. And you can see that's got some bubbles in it. That is carbonated. Time to start bottling. And this is a bottle capper. It's got a little magnet in it to hold the cap. Three dead shot daiquiris, there you have them. Let's see how they are, baby. Oh my God. That is not bad. It is strongly strawberry, but it is not overwhelmingly strawberry. It is absolutely a strawberry daiquiri. It is bright, refreshing, alcoholic. <laughs> There's a note there of toasted marshmallows that comes in kind of late. It's got just the right amount of citrus for my taste, just the right amount of bite acidity. I like this a lot. Deadshot daiquiri gives you like an aim assist for um, nailing those headshots in Call of Duty. This version will not do that. This version will, um, this will be the opposite of that. Anyway, there you have Deadshot Daiquiri, uh, the how to drink version. I would just venture to say the official version. We'll put a uh, trophy up here on the shelf forever. One thing about Deadshot Daiquiri that's true is it's just as good out of the bottle as it is on ice on a cool summer day. And that's right. You can enjoy a lovely Deadshot Daiquiri right here in a glass by Visky. Visky Glassware, the official glassware provider of how to drink. Uh, they asked if they could sponsor the show. I said, thank you, thank you. Uh, you make beautiful glassware. Let's tell the people about your beautiful glassware. Well, you can use the link in the pink comment below up here in the corner. Use code how to drink 15 at checkout. You're gonna get 15% off of your entire order of glassware from Visky. And, mmm. Uh, yeah! All right, it's time to make PhD Flopper, otherwise known as Dr. Flopper. This is a riff on Dr. Pepper. Dr. Flopper is a Perca Cola that makes you explode when you dive to the ground, but in a good way for you, bad way for the people around you. PhD Flopper is made from prunes, according to characters in game, and that the prunes are not in a liquid form, but rather in chunks, with some characters complaining about eating the drink. Spoiler, we're not gonna put whole chunks of prunes in here. Do you know why they said prunes? Because there's a rumor going around that Dr. Pepper is prune flavored. That's, that's why. Prunes are plums. 
Uh, that's true, they're dried plums. And this is plum wine. And uh, we can use this as uh, the basis for this drink. And it's good, actually. You're gonna like this one a lot. This is really tasty. Just like last time, I am going to make three of these, but in this case, I'm just gonna use three shakers to make my life easier, because these are larger volume drinks. We're gonna start with three ounces of our Japanese Gekikan plum wine. So now I want one ounce of Sangue Moralako. Uh, this is a cherry liqueur made by Luxardo. You could use cherry hearing. They are very similar. Why cherry? Because the plum wine and the sangue morlaco resulted in something that reminded me of Dr. Pepper. Exactly Dr. Pepper? No. Close enough? Yeah, kinda. Uh-oh. We're a little low on vodka. So I'm a little low on Tito's over here. I do have a bottle of this community spirit vodka that I'm pretty sure was sent to me by Curiata, which by the way, you should check out if you wanna pick up any of these bottles and use them at home. Drink.curiata.com down there and the pin comment are up here in the corner. So each of these get two ounces of vodka. And that's it, now I gotta shake it and carbonate it. You may ask yourself, how will he shake three drinks? You may ask yourself, how did I get here? You may say to yourself, this is not my beautiful cocktail. You may say to yourself, this is not my beautiful wife. Water going underground, water going around. Can I shake three cocktails at once? I've never done it. Now I gotta carbonate it. see it's kind of cascading up like a Guinness this has the color of like a coca-cola or something like that it is a dark cola looking beverage I love that let's bottle these bad boys up there you have a cold refreshing dr. flopper flopper PhD PhD flopper whatever you want to call it there we go that is what the doctor ordered. It has plum and cherry notes combined in a way that is actually not overly sweet. In fact, I probably could have added a little bit of sweetness to this. I carbonated the hell out of it, which is going to push the acidity higher. Uh, countering that with some sweetness would probably be wise. It's not readily delicious, but it's not bad. It's kind of an acquired taste. It has an earthy, plummy, uh, notes of cherry that come in late there, kind of thing. It's a little bit raisiny, yeah. Not plum then, maybe more more prune. And I'll say that it has a little, like it's a little sulfury, but it doesn't taste like sulfur. It doesn't taste like the way sulfur smells. It tastes like raisins. It feels like exactly what Dr. Flopper should, in fact, taste like. So, here's to you, kid. So much of this episode is thanks to Darcy O'Neill. Uh, he's got a great YouTube channel called Art of Drink. He's also got a great company called Art of Drink. And uh, he produces this stuff, which is acid phosphate, as I drop the bottle. He wrote the book Fix the Pumps, which is a phenomenal tome of old uh, soda counter wisdom recipes. Pharmacists, like they made soft drinks back in the day. All of this stuff. And I am drawing heavily on the research and information that you can acquire from him. Check out his YouTube channel, give it a subscribe. Thank you to Mr. Darcy O'Neill. It's time to make Mule Kick. This is a, a perk cola that lets you carry three weapons at once, kind of turning you into a pack mule. Uh, according to Dempsey, Mule Kick tastes like beer, but Takeo, uh, Takeo, Takeo, states that it tastes like a regular cola, making it taste different for everybody in the game. I hear Mule Kick and look at the branding around it and the sound that goes with it. And I'm like, okay, it's gotta be a Mezcal Mule. It's gotta be. One of the things you're gonna need is a ginger extract. And here's mine. This recipe comes from Darcy O'Neill. I will never make ginger syrup any other way ever again. It is so good. It has everything that was missing from the ginger syrups that I used to make where I would cut up ginger and cook them in a pot with water and sugar. You take a bunch of uh, powdered ginger, uh, half as much fresh ginger diced up, put them together, 
soak them in ethanol for 24 hours, strain off the ethanol, and this is what you get. And this has all the fire and intensity of ginger. According to Darcy, this is how the old pharmacists used to do it. Darcy O'Neill says that you need about 30 mils of this to 750 milliliters of simple syrup in order to make a ginger syrup. Although he uses a three to two simple, I use a two to one. Um, it's a very minute difference. I found that to be not quite hot enough for me, so I doubled it, so I went 60 mils of this to a 750. Uh, if you do the math on that, that is roughly 8%. So we can skip making a whole batch of ginger syrup, which is right here, by just adding whatever simple syrup we add to our recipe, we add 8% of that with this. And I'm looking at a recipe that calls for three ounces of ginger syrup. So I can just take my 90 mils, multiply it by 0 0.08, and I know I need 7.2 milliliters of this to match a 60 mils to a 750 ratio. I will taste as I go. I've workshopped this recipe, I know how to make it, but I may jack up the ginger heat on this particular version because I want it hot. Why hot? Let's get three shakers going so we can make these suckers. Let's make two and see if that'll fill three bottles. I think it will based on how it's gone so far. So I need two ounces of mezcal. I'm going to use um, Shikaru Silver 102. I'm actually doing one and a half in each of these. So three ounces of mezcal. Each of these gets three ounces of simple syrup, but I need to do one and a half. Therefore, I need four and a half per batch. I need an ounce and a half of the acid water that we were talking about before. Now I wanna add my house-made ginger extract. So I need 10.8 milliliters of our extract if I wanted to keep it the way it was. I'm gonna start there at 11 milliliters. And if it feels like it's not hot enough, I'm gonna add some more. Yeah, I wanna add more to that. I'm gonna add um, another 50%, so five more mils. Now we're talking. Fresh ginger, tastes just like it. It's unbelievable how good that is. Let's shake this up and carbonate it and bottle it. All right. Let's get ready to carbonate. Give that a shake. All right, this looks about ready. Let's off gas it. I don't know why I felt like I had to come in with that much spice on it. Off gas it, yo. Let's bottle our mule kick. All right. There you go. And here we go with our mule kick. This is my favorite one. I think mezcal can really overpower a drink. Here, it's present without being overpowering. This is excellent. I would serve this to a lot of people. It is bright, it is fresh, it has the iodiney, tangy, smoky bite of mezcal without dominating the whole drink. The carbonation is just right. It tastes like fresh ginger and citrus. I'm very happy with the way that my ginger beer concoctions are coming out here. It has just the right amount of like burn on my throat. Definitely, this is so far my favorite of all of the Perca-Colas that I've made. All of them, going way back three years ago when I did the original Perca-Cola episode. This one kicks ass. All right, one more Perca-Cola. We're doing Electric Cherry. I guess this is a riff on Electric Chair? Electric Cherry? Electric Cherry makes me think of Cherry from Pee Wee's Playhouse. And then I think about Cherry just like electrocuting people to death. <laughs> it's supposed to be the first, oldest of the Perca-Colas. It's presented a little bit differently as I understand it. That led me down a path because I was like, well, it's gotta be cherry and it's gotta have some tartness to it. Hmm, maybe it should be a cherry phosphate. That is like a really old soda counter, soda fountain style cherry drink. Um, so I said, let's start with that. I've never had one. I went through the process of making the wild cherry syrup that that calls for, which by the way, produces a teeny tiny amount of uh, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen, uh, what's, that, what's that stuff? Hydrogen cyanide, but it should be safe, it should be safe. It took me a while to make this stuff and I messed up, I had to start over. Where is it, okay. Oh! You son of a bitch. 
Finally, I got it done and I made my first cherry phosphate. And I was like, damn it, this doesn't really taste like cherries. This tastes like almonds, which is also not a great sign. Maybe mine had a little too much cyanide in it. I didn't like it though. And so I'm gonna go with something a lot more accessible and a lot more standard uh, using sour cherry syrup. This is my sour cherry syrup. This is the easiest thing in the world to make. You go to the store, your grocery store, or maybe a health food store. You can also get it on Amazon. And you buy yourself some sour cherry juice. And then you use that like it's water and simple syrup and you mix it one to one. It's one to one because I didn't want it to be um, that sweet. And I didn't want my sweetness and my cherryness tied together in that ratio. One to one worked better. So this is very, very stupid easy. It's all cherry. It's all cherry. So my notes say cherry hearing, but that's incorrect. It's Kirschwasser, cherry brandy. This is a brandy, like a cognac, except it's not aged, made from cherries. It's 80 proof. This is a full proof spirit. This is liquor, not liqueur. So this is the basis for our recipe. Um, and otherwise it's a really simple one. So each of these gets actually three ounces of our cherry syrup. Remember, this is more water than sugar in, uh, well, this is more water than a lot of my syrups, so six ounces of cherry syrup, sour cherry syrup. Each of these gets one and a quarter ounces of my acid water. So that would be two and a half ounces for our double. And each of these needs an ounce and a half of cherry Kurzwasser. So we're looking at two and one. All right, done, three. There you go. And now I'm ready to shake this and carbonate it. Pour the drink on top. All right, we gotta strain this into our thing and start carbonating. All right, this should be pretty carved up. Let's bottle them up. Uh, okay, I'm gonna cap these suckers. There you go. So here we go, electric cherry. Electric cherry. Oh, that is so good. Ooh, I love this one. It's sweet. It's like modeled after a soft drink, like all of these things are. It has this woody, earthy thing, this flavor that comes from the Kurzwasser. It's woodsy, it's earthy, it's a little bit, is it herbal? I don't know if herbal's the right word, but woody, earthy, not bitter. It has a mature taste to it, a little oakiness. The acidity that we added plus the sour cherry juice really collaborate into this, this very nice tartness. And then it finishes on just the, the most lovely cherry flavor. It is so good. I wish, like this is the cherry soda. This is what you wish cherry sodas tasted like, in my opinion. High in sugar, so like, don't kill yourself on it because it probably won't make you feel great tomorrow, but very, very tasty, fun to drink. We made one, two, three, four of these uh, Perca-Colas today. Finally, years later, following up on the original Perca-Cola episode, I would love to do more of these because figuring these out was actually a huge amount of fun. And I'd like to go a little more sciencey on the next one, get a little bit into some, some natural flavors, some essences, some extracts, a little bit more of that. Uh, Cause I feel like I'm starting to exhaust what I can do with just stuff out of liquor bottles here. Although these all came out great. So I don't know, I don't know. I would love to do another one. That's all I'm saying. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had fun. Uh, I, I hope that you are enjoying Call of Duty Zombies. I, I'm not a player, I don't play the game. Do me a favor, drop a comment below and give me your list of which of the next four Perca Colas to do. Because I'm getting ready. I'm gonna do that next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. In the meantime, here are one, two, three, four other episodes of How to Drink that are just specially picked just for you. You're gonna love them. Just give them a, just, just watch them. Like and subscribe. Sign up for my Patreon and enjoy a cold, refreshing Peca-Cola. Cheers.